Hi everyone and welcome to our spring 2021 book study where we are focusing on the assessment playbook for distance and blended learning. My name is Misty Higgins and I'm joined by Carrie McDaniel and we are professional learning coordinators at the in the Division of Program Standards at the Kentucky Department of Education. And really the purpose of our video tutorial is we're learning how to use Google Classroom as we dig deeper into this topic of assessment in both the distance and blended learning setting. So we have two success criteria. By the end of the video, we want you to be able to explain the function of how we will use stream within Google Classroom, as well as be able to explain the function of how we will use the classwork tab within Google Classroom. So let's take a closer look at that first success criterion that you can explain the function of the stream tab within our Google Classroom. When you open up the Google Classroom, the opening page is the classroom stream. Across the top, you will notice there are four different tabs that you can navigate between, and the first tab is the classroom stream tab. Now, the ways in which we will use it as a part of this study. One is to send reminders out. So for example, prior to each month's synchronous meeting, we will send out a reminder of that upcoming live session along with the link that you can use to join us in that synchronous meeting. We also want to use the stream to post questions to you all, as well as maybe pull a quote from the text to really encourage you to collaborate, to discuss and talk within the Google Classroom community. It's also a place for you to capture your ideas and experiences so that you can share those with the colleagues and it might even be resources that you want to share around some of the topics we will discuss related to assessment. And then finally, it's a place for us to respond to your questions. So in the stream tab, you can pose your questions. Carrie and I will monitor that and make sure we respond to those in a timely manner. So now let's take a look at the function of classwork in Google Classroom. So when you log into Google Classroom, you're going to want to click on that second classwork tab at the top. And we'll be using the classwork tab for a variety of purposes throughout the study. So first, we'll be using it to reference the learning plan for this study. Your learning plan is really that big picture or high level overview. And it's your continual one stop shop for all of the essential pieces of the study. So when in doubt where of where to find something, check here first. Some of you may want to look at look back at this learning plan throughout the study as this will be here for you to continually reference. Also, there will be some resources we'll want to share with you throughout the study that support the text content. For example, Doug Fisher has shared some sample assessments with us suitable for the distance and blended learning settings, and those could be some resources that we might want to post under that classwork tab for you to access. Your optional monthly assignments. So you'll be able to access and complete those there within the classwork tab. Those monthly assignments are there to help you reflect deeper on the topics presented throughout the study, but can also be helpful in guiding you if you decide to later present this content back in your own school or district with participants. And then each month we will create a wrap up video that highlights the most important points from that month's topic. Those wrap up videos will be linked in your learning plan within the classwork tab for you to reference, as well as any additional videos or slides presentations that we may think you may find helpful in supporting your understanding of the text content at a deeper level. So this is what the classwork tab will look like for you starting on February 4th. So notice that we've organized the classwork tab for you by month to align with the text content as well as the content in your learning plan, which we'll look at that more closely in just a minute. These are self paced and organized by month to help keep you on schedule in getting through the content, but just know that you can use this at a pace that works best for you and your schedule. All of the resources and materials will be here for you to access and reference when needed, but we never want anyone to not participate just because they haven't had time to read a chapter or they couldn't attend the last synchronous meeting. We hope that you'll join us as much as you can and just feel confident in knowing whatever you maybe weren't able to attend will be recorded and linked in your learning plan or under your classwork tab 
for you to catch on up on later when you have time. So now let's take a closer look at what's listed under general resources. So when you click on a resource, you're going to see a brief description of the resource and its purpose, along with a link to the document. Here you see a description of the assessment playbook study plan with an attached link to the actual Google document. So you'll just click on the picture there of the document to open that up. And so here you see a screenshot of the first month of our assessment playbook study plan. At the top of your study plan, you'll notice we've broken it down into month, purpose, watch, read, and attend, reflect and respond, and extend. So under month, you'll notice that the topics that we're studying for each month are listed there for you. So the month of February, we'll be studying assessment cookies. And like I said before, that aligns with your first month's topic in your text. Under purpose, we have the learning goals and success criteria outlined there for you for each individual module. And under watch, read and attend, this clarifies for you exactly what you need to do each month, and we've intentionally tried to list it in the order in which you need to do it to be better prepared. So your text readings, links to links to the synchronous meetings, will all be posted there, as well as the monthly wrap up video, as I mentioned earlier. Please note that we will be recording the synchronous meeting, so if there's one you're unable to attend, we will post the recording link here on the learning plan, typically within 24 hours after the synchronous meeting for you to watch at your convenience. So under attend, these links will go from a Zoom meeting link to a recorded video link after our synchronous meetings have occurred. That fourth reflect and respond column, notice that there are some questions there that we'd like everyone to reflect on, as well as some where you will have a choice, like one of three or two of four. Misty is going to go into more depth on those and where to record your responses, but just know there will be some you will choose from and some for everyone to consider. And then finally, that fifth and last column, extend, provides you with optional resources to extend your thinking, really taking into account uh, resources through the lens of multiple perspectives, regardless of your role. In terms of the monthly assignments, so each month we would like for you to complete and submit the reflect and respond task, as well as to attend a synchronous meeting. So let's take a closer look at the reflect and respond task. The purpose of these tasks is really to provide you an opportunity to synthesize your learning, both what you're learning from reading in the text, as well as through discussions that you will have with colleagues in the Google Classroom, as well as during the live synchronous meetings. We also want the reflect and respond task to help you make connections to your own background knowledge and experiences to what you're learning from the text so that ultimately you can apply that learning in a way that is relevant to your current role, whether that's in your school district or within your region. To access the reflect and respond task in Google Classroom in the classwork tab, when you look under each month's topic, the first item listed is the reflect and respond task. When you click on the reflect and respond task, you're going to see the text within there is just listing all of the questions. And like Carrie mentioned earlier, you always have a choice among the questions that you will answer, but each month you will respond to a total of two questions. Now the way in which you respond to those questions, you also get a choice as well. If you prefer to write your responses, then you would simply click on the Google Doc and then it's going to open up your own copy of that Google document where you can type your responses in the space provided and you can expand that box as much as you need to to fit your entire response. Once you have typed in your response, make sure you submit it so that Carrie and I can see those responses as well. But if you prefer to verbally record your response, you don't want to write it out or type it out, then you would click on the Flipgrid option. When you click on it, it'll take you to a screen that looks like this, and all you have to do is click on the big red record a response icon. It will then prompt you to put in either a Gmail or a Microsoft email account, and then it will take you to the screen where you can begin recording. You have up to 10 minutes to record your response to whatever two questions you may have chosen that particular month. 
in addition to the reflect and respond, each month we will also have a synchronous meeting. And the purpose of the synchronous meeting is to really provide an opportunity to you as participants to really engage and interact with each other through both whole group and small group interactions. We utilize the Zoom platform for that. We will um, use the breakout room feature quite a bit. And I really want to reiterate something Carrie said earlier. This is self paced. So prior to each month's synchronous meeting, if for any reason you had not completed the reading yet or the reflect and respond task, don't let that hinder you from attending the synchronous meetings. I think these meetings have proven to be incredibly beneficial for participants in the past, as it's an opportunity for you to really share with colleagues around the state and discuss the topics of this text in a way where you can share your ideas, they're sharing their ideas with you, and you can walk away from these meetings with a deeper understanding of the content, but it's also some new ideas that you can um, try. And so optional extensions, as mentioned previously, when we introduced the extend column of the study plan, the optional extensions are offered for a variety of purposes. Our first purpose is to really provide you with additional opportunities to dig into the topics each month beyond just what is in the text. Second, we want to offer resources that may offer varying perspectives on the topics presented. And then thirdly, being mindful of the different, different roles we have represented here in this study from classroom teachers to instructional specialists and district leaders, just to name a few. We want you to have opportunities to apply learning from the study in a way that's relevant to your individual role. And so here is where you will find those optional extensions within Google Classroom. Notice that there is one per month listed under the reflect and respond tasks. And just like on the general resources and reflect and responds, when you click on the optional extensions, you'll see a brief description of the resource along with the links to the resources themselves. So here for the month of February, you see there are four optional extension resources linked for you if you're interested in that deeper dive. And then if you have questions moving forward, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Misty and I are happy to help clarify any questions you may have throughout the study, and you can reach us via email or through the Google Classroom stream.